This is CBSSports.com's College Football 360. We come your way each and every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm Kevin Cork. It's our chance now to look back at the week that was and a look ahead to the week's action in college football. And for that, we are thrilled to have Dennis Dodd join us once again on the program. Dennis, listen, anytime I play video gaming, a lot of guys want to play Madden because you can really run up a score. But let me tell you, in college football this past weekend, Geno Smith was sort of like playing Madden out there. It was like an outbreak of fast break football on the field. Gino, amazing. What can uh, what can you add to what was obviously one of, uh, if not a game of a lifetime, had to be one of the all-time best games ever? You know, the, the stat I was looking for, Kevin, is what, who was the last team to score 63 and lose? And I still haven't found that. In, in Division 1A, I'm still searching for that, but you're right. I, the, the upshot of that is obviously the explosion of offenses. Really, it's been happening, you know, for a while in college football. The other part of that is, is did Geno Smith, you know, wrap up the Heisman in, in week five? And I think that's to be determined if we all let, you know, our, our, ourselves settle down and think about this. You know, the Heisman is really a lot of it is the product of how well the team does. And I, given that they did give up 63, I, you know, they'd have to go at least 10 and 2 for him to win. If they go 9 and 3, you're letting a lot of other people in under the tent. So, I think that's one of the storylines going forward, but he is a tremendous player. Listen, I'm looking at his season totals right mm-hmm. there. 20 touchdowns, Dennis, not a single interception yet. I mean, to me, that in and of itself is remarkable, but to add to that an 83% completion percentage, I just can't remember a single athlete uh, putting up these sorts of numbers, and I'm talking Klingler and uh, Andre Ware, I don't think put up numbers like these. And uh, on, on the Heisman discussion, his numbers are better through five games than RG3 last year. Um, he's got, tw- like you said, 20 touchdowns, I think, something like 28 incompletions through five games. And what no one, really no one's talking about is maybe the two best Heisman contenders are on his team, Tavon Austin and Stedman Bailey. I mean, one guy caught, you know, a bunch of passes for 300 yards. The other guy almost went for 200, and they're the two top leading receivers in the country. So, you know, you may have a. Is it possible to have a sweep from one school to top of the voting? Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, listen, we've seen teams that have had great talent. I think back to some of the great Nebraska teams. You know, Rozier, and I'm not sure if it was uh, if uh, it was Turner and Rozier back then. I I could easily have seen that team having say one and two or one two and three in the uh, in the finals. But boy, this is an amazing stat. And speaking of great stats, let me ask you about the overall picture, uh, Dennis, about the offense, not just what we saw in that particular Baylor West Virginia game but just in general I mean these numbers are like pinball anymore yeah it's it's really Kevin it started really about in the year 2000 statistically the NCAA tracks about 13 or 14 offensive what they call trends and they're really average yards and points of the entire nation per year and, and all of those categories uh, you know all-time highs have been set in those, all of those categories multiple times since the year 2000. I'm talking about average passes per game, total offense per team, points per team. Uh, the craziest one, I think, right now, and it may come down, the uh, last year teams averaged 27.4 points. That was, I think, second all-time. Uh, the high was 28.2. Right now we're at 30.5 per team. That would be, what, two and a half points more than the all-time high, which, you know, given they've been tracking this since the 40s, is pretty significant. So I I don't know if it's going to go down or not. You know, the other thing that's happened, it's a lot of things. You know, in the old days, Jimmy Johnson, when he was a coach in Miami, used to take his best recruits, no matter who they were, and put them on defense. Uh, You know, he'd he'd take safeties and make them linebackers. He'd take linebackers, fatten them up, and make, make them defensive tackles. I don't know if that's being done anymore. I mean, I think because what we're talking about and because of the rules i think coaches just take those best players and make them offensive players i mean you see you see now the corners are going to have to be six two six three to defend against these receivers and not everybody has that i i've always contended people throw around the term shutdown corner like it's a you know a piece of cereal or something there aren't any shutdown corners in college football there are few in pro football there aren't any in college football. No question about that. As we look at the numbers there, you saw more than 1,500 total offensive yards 
put up on the board between West Virginia and Baylor in a game, as Dennis points out, uh, Baylor hangs 63 and they still lose. It's just extraordinary. Dennis Dodd joining us here on College Football 360. We come your way each and every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Dennis, I'm going to ask you about um, more big numbers. Listen, uh, you talked about how defenses simply aren't shutting teams down. We had some outstanding individual performances outside of that Baylor-West Virginia game, beginning with Stephen Morris over at the University of Miami. Listen, this was quarterback you for a long time, and Morris sets an all-time record. Yeah, and I thought, you know, he did it against NC State uh, in a game where Miami needed every one of those yards. It was a very close game throughout. Um, and I think Steve Morris, you know, really uh, went an extra step and established himself in that game. And I think really sets the stage for this Notre Dame game. You know, Ja'Cory Harris was a guy who was much more heralded than Stephen Morris, um, but just couldn't get over that interception thing. He just couldn't read defense as well and, and took, made some bad, bad decisions. Stephen Morris, uh, bigger, better arm, uh, and better athlete. So I, I, this makes this Notre Dame game incredibly more sexier now when you've got him coming off that game. Johnny Manziel also 453 yards passing over the weekend. Benny Cunningham, how about the uh, job Benny did in that Middle Tennessee upset victory? Yeah, no, and look, the Sun Belt is having its all-time year. It was formed in 2001, and you know Middle Tennessee is a team that's lost to McNeese State and also beaten Georgia Tech. And this Benny Cunningham kid, you know, you wonder – how he got to Middle Tennessee. You know, maybe there's a story there that he couldn't get into another school, but why isn't he in the SEC somewhere? Well, you know what's interesting, too, is if you watch a lot of the National Football League, and I know you do, more often now you're seeing these outstanding, amazing athletes in the NFL, and they come from these relatively smaller programs because sometimes you get a diamond in the rough that just can't get into or can't qualify for one of the big uh, D1 schools. Dennis Dodd with us here on the program. Let me ask you, you mentioned just very briefly about the uh, Notre Dame-Miami game uh, that's coming up. Of course, a lot of people are looking forward to that one, but I want to ask you about uh, surprises. Yeah, I'm a little bit personally surprised that Miami is as good as they are. Give me a few surprises that you have so far this early stage of the season, Dennis. I think Notre Dame, I'm sorry, Arkansas's collapse, uh, you know, it was it was one thing to, to lose to Louisiana Monroe, and obviously it's snowballed, and that's a soap opera that is not going to end anytime soon, uh, probably in early November when A.D. Jeff Long names a new coach, but... You know, it, it just looks really, really bad. Um, they go out there every week. They continue to give up a lot of points. Niall Davis, uh, who is a Heisman contender, just isn't the same player he was after the uh, after the ankle last year. You know, I would say, you know, Alabama, it being Alabama and everybody else, we're sitting here talking about trends and offensive uh, powerhouses and explosions and everything. Alabama just keeps per percolating along. In their last 19 games, Kevin, they've trailed for exactly 25 minutes and 27 seconds. We're all looking forward to November 3rd, and there's not a, a reason in the world to think that Alabama shouldn't make it two straight, three out of four, and seven in a row for the SEC. I would say the other one is, is, uh, is Notre Dame is, is back, in quotes, in some, some sort of back, I'll say that. I don't know if they're all the way back. I don't know if they're a BCS team, but... We all looked at their schedule before the season and saw how daunting it was. Well, they just keep winning. And now they have, you know, a de facto home game in Chicago with a, with a week off to play Miami um, and, and improve Miami, I should say, as we just mentioned. But, you know, and that dovetails in with the relevance of how, you know, they joined the ACC a couple of weeks ago. FSU looks like it's back. And they're all in one pot together starting in 2014. So I think it's a, a good for fo college football, really, in general, to have those three back. I agree completely, especially good. Whenever you're talking Notre Dame and Miami and the game has a little bit of relevance, although I will point out that Notre Dame's defense is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but. I think the Canes are going to learn that when they go up to Chicago. Great stuff as always. Dennis Dodd joining us here on the program on College Football 360. Of course, Dennis is with us each and every week, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And a reminder, everybody, we have a huge schedule coming up for you this weekend here at the College Football 360 desk. We have a huge doubleheader. The, who's going to get the leg up in the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy race? Will it be the Zoomies or the Middies? Navy, Air Force, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Saturday. Then we we have our game that will be live streamed right here. LSU taking on Florida. 3.30 kickoff. We begin your pregame coverage 
right here at 3.20 Eastern Time. And, of course, I'll have your halftime highlights. And post game. I'll have highlights and be joined by Gary Danielson, live from Gainesville. That's all coming up this weekend right here at CBSSports.com.